As the 19th century transformed into the 20th century, it was seen as perhaps leaving behind a period of degeneracy and heading towards a hope for a new beginning. It was still seen as a confrontation, though, between the old and the new, a challenge to long-held foundational beliefs. Everything was changing. New ways were emerging as to how to see the world. For the audience in 1902 watching this film, there was amazement that the bullets didn't kill anyone. The subject of this presentation is the artist Sybil Andrews. Born in 1898 in England, Sybil went on to be very influential in the English Futurist movement of the 1920s and 1930s. She was very involved in the war efforts of both the First World War and the Second World War. Following the Second World War, her and her husband, Walter Morgan, emigrated to Canada landing eventually in Campbell River, British Columbia. As a young woman, the world would have been rapidly changing around Sybil. Our basic understanding of the nature of reality of the universe was radically transformed through people like Albert Einstein with his theory of relativity and the work of Max Planck on quantum mechanics. Alongside these changes, of course, technology was rapidly changing as well, with the rise of the automobile and the airplane being two major shifts in how people traveled and experienced reality. And of course, the arts were changing right alongside. New ways of viewing the world, drawing heavily from Einstein's ideas of no hierarchy and position or no one perspective being given privilege over another perspective when viewing an object was completely embraced by Pablo Picasso and George Brock as they developed cubist ideas. The Italian futurists during this same time embraced speed, embraced technology, they embraced youth and violence very closely associated with the rise of fascism in Italy at the same time. They loved the new technologies of the car and the airplane and embraced industry. The work of Giacono Bala is seen in the top left corner, showing the speed of a motorcycle from 1913, very much showing the dynamics around the movement of a motorcycle with a swirling vortex and energies moving alongside the machine. And similar ideas were also developing in England around the same time. In the lower left corner, we see the cover of the Blast Manifesto, which served as an outline of the ideas of vorticism. This was published in 1915. And the text addressed the love of the dynamic and admiration for the machine age, highlighting bold geometries intended to pull the eye into the center of the composition. In the center of the slide, I've included a painting by Edward Wadsworth of a dazzle ship in dry dock. The story of dazzle ships in the First World War is a very interesting one, and I'll speak to dazzle ships a few slides ahead. We're looking here with a focus on futurism as it was coming out of Italy, but also in the lower left-hand corner, an example of suprematism from Kazimir Malevich, who was working in Russia at the same time. Um, as we move around the slide, we have works by Giacono Bala and uh, Carlo Cara. Um, you can see the love of 
certainly the love of motion and the complexity of perspectives uh, and uh, slashing geometries, some of it very close to cubism, uh, but also with the introduction through people like Filippo Marinetti, uh, with the introduction of words and text to go along with the very dynamic, uh, very active and action-based surface of the works. On this slide, we are revisiting the Vorticist movement in England, and I've reproduced the cover from the Blast Manifesto, which was said to be the same size as the London Telephone Book at the time uh, by Wyndham Lewis. Um, and what's interesting to, to look more closely at is how the body and the machine are fusing, where you have the soldiers and the guns uh, basically part of the same body, um, which is also integrated and interrelated into the geometry of the city behind them. Uh, on the other side of the screen, we have uh, Helen Saunders of 1915 and, and um, Edward Wadsworth of 1914, basically showing the human figure and how it is moving towards a geometric abstraction and leaving behind uh, many of the uh, notions of uh, the body and the nude that uh, would have come out of or would have been popular in England in uh, the late 19th century. Uh, definitely a move towards a new future, one fusing man, machine, and geometry. The assassination of Archduke Ferdinand on June 28, 1914 in Sarajevo created a domino effect throughout Europe that precipitated the First World War. As the war went on, the old world of fighting with horses and men came up against a new reality, that of artillery, of tanks, of machine guns, and the decimation of the human body that led artists to ask the question, if this was the result of reason, then reason must be seriously flawed. We need a new way to think. I had mentioned Dazzle Ships a few slides back, and it's a fascinating story, as I've shown again the painting by Edward Wadsworth um, showing the Dazzle Ship painting in dry dock, but alongside some of the actual photos of Dazzle Ships. How the British Admiralty would have known about the theories of vorticism is qu quite a mystery, um, but they certainly embraced some of its theories uh, concerning geometry and optics, and they designed the painting of the ships based on vortices theories in order to confuse German U-boats so that when looking through a periscope, they would have difficulty determining both the speed and the direction of the ships, which of course made it harder to torpedo them. With the ending of the war, we enter into boom times with the rise of the Roaring Twenties and the creation of celebrity culture and the theater becoming a central part of how people related and admired. Um, leading right through into the dirty 30s and the depression, the collapse of the economic system, uh, as we look in the bottom left-hand corner with the irony of the American way of life and the boasting of high standards of living uh, while bread lines line up in front of it. And in the midst of all this change, Sybil Andrews, the artist, was growing up. She would have been 22 years old in 1920 and was very much influenced by the traditional approach to um, the arts, notably through architectural renderings and use of perspective and composition and light and shadow um, in these for examples, given here, these dry point etchings uh, reflect Sybil learning her craft, but very much staying within what would be seen as traditional norms coming out of the 19th century, um, but changing very quickly all around her. And changing very quickly indeed, within just a few short years, Sybil Andrews would become associated with the Grosvenor School and would be greatly influenced by her instructor, Claude Flight, in the image whose art is seen in the image on the left, 
who championed the color lino cut print and embraced many of the same values as futurism coming out of Italy with the love of speed and technology and the worker and the sense of, of um, absolute kind of violence and motion and slashing diagonals in his art um, and began teaching at the Grosvenor School in the late 1920s where Sybil had got a job as a secretary and she became very much under his influence um, as alongside starting a relationship with Cyril Power who was also a student of Claude Flight's as we see Cyril Power's work in the top right hand corner and we can see the influence and in Sybil in the in the bottom right with her steeplejace uh, lino cut print which was a huge departure from her traditional architectural dry points and her very traditional approach to art making at the beginning of the 1920s um, changing dramatically by the end of the 1920s The 1920s represented great shifts in Sybil Andrews' work and her perceptions of what art could be. Both of the images we see here are from 1929 with the hollers at the top and concert hall at the bottom. And the influence of Claude Flight and lino cut printing has certainly come through in her simplification of form the repetition of form, the angularities in the geometry of the compositions, and in a reduced color palette, all characteristic of how Cloud Flight was teaching the lino cut at the time. Sybil was well on her way to a new world. <laughs>